Every now and then, I like to dabble in music production as a hobby. And when I do, I typically play around until I stumble upon a melody or a chord progression or synth patch that sounds good. Then I'll produce, say, 30 to 60 seconds of music, get an immeasurable amount of dopamine from producing something that I think sounds cool, and then lose momentum and never touch the thing again. But I got thinking about how the process of making music can be automated. Specifically, automating the first part of making music where you come up with ideas before deciding which ones to work with and which ones to discard. I was interested in automating this idea generation process. Now I started with the idea to create a program with the ability to generate a range of musical ideas, from melodies to synthesizer patches, but I ended up narrowing in on generating synthesizer patches specifically and actually developing an algorithm that learned to produce patches based on my preferences. So here's how I went about that. The first thing I did was look around for existing projects that do some kind of musical idea generation. And I did find this one that uses the programming language Python to interact with the music production software Ableton Live. It can generate lots of different combinations of audio clips and can also evolve virtual synthesizer parameters over time to give you ideas for patches. Now I actually tried to get this running on my computer, but I ran into some issues downloading the required libraries, and it was created for an older version of Ableton. So I ended up giving up on that one and I decided, what the hell, I'm going to go ahead and make something similar, but without the compatibility issue and that is more suited to the use cases that I had in mind. First of all, I figured that the best way to do this with the latest versions of Ableton was to use Max, a program that comes with certain versions of Ableton that allows you to control pretty much anything within Ableton via a graphical programming interface as well as with the programming language JavaScript. Now I hadn't used Max much before doing this, so I had to learn how to use it as I went along, as well as getting more comfortable with JavaScript, which I hadn't used much before either. So first of all I worked out how to use the API to control various things in Ableton, such as adding notes to MIDI clips, changing the parameters of Ableton instruments and VST plugins, and even how to send MIDI CC messages to external hardware synthesizers to control their parameters. Once I had that figured out, I could actually make the program that was going to generate the ideas. And this was my first iteration. Basically, I click this button and ideas are generated and shown on this 2D plot where I can click on a dot and it automatically sets the corresponding generated patch. And it works pretty much the same way as that project I mentioned, so the algorithm that I programmed in JavaScript that actually generates the patches is an evolutionary novelty search algorithm. And what the evolutionary part means is that it is an algorithm based on the biological concept of evolution. So in this case, it's not like an organism that's being evolved, but a synthesizer patch. So it starts with a population of randomly generated sets of parameter values for the synthesizer, and then it goes through a series of generations where the next generation is a product of breeding, selection, and mutation of the previous generation, so each successive generation should mostly consist of the best candidates from the previous generation, along with some variation to make sure new traits keep getting explored. And all of that can be written in code and mathematically calculated, and that's what I did. Now, the fact that it's a novelty search algorithm means that the measure of how good the patch is, in other words, the criteria that determines how likely a patch is to make it to the next generation, is how novel the patch is compared to all the other patches that are being considered. So what the novelty search looks for is a set of patches that are as different from one another as possible, so that you get a diverse range of sounds to choose from. Regarding the scatterplot of the results, this is another idea from the aforementioned novelty search project. So if each patch consists of 20 parameters, that means that they have 20 dimensions, but using an algorithm called TSNE, each patch can be reduced down to two dimensions, so that we can visualise the rough relative difference between each patch on a 2D plane. So patches close together in the plot should sound similar in some way, whereas those far apart should sound very different. 
Max has a JavaScript user interface object. So that's how I was able to show this plot and make it interactive. So here you can see me trying it out on one of Ableton's built-in virtual synthesizers and listening to some of the generated patches. I ran this a few times, trying out different algorithm parameters such as a different mutation rate or a different number of generations, etc. And as you've heard, there were some interesting patches produced. I quite liked this one that I've decided to call Nightmare Traffic Jam. But other than that, they just weren't really what I was looking for. Like, yes, I heard a diverse range of sounds, but I liked almost none of them. And I guess that makes sense. I mean, within the entire set of possibilities for parameters, there is probably just a very tiny space containing the patches that sound good. And so the algorithm just rarely ever generates anything within that space, and it's not guided towards the parameters that sound good in any way. It's just looking for stuff that's different. So I decided, okay, what if I gave it some guidance as to what I think sounds good? So I changed the algorithm in the following ways. Number one, within the starting generation, I put in a few patches that I know I like. So I'm essentially forcing some good genes in there from the start among all the randomly generated ones. Number two, instead of having the fitness function be based purely on novelty, I made it so that I can evaluate each candidate patch so that the algorithm can learn what I like. So I made this interface that allows me to click on the score that I give the current patch between 0 and 1 according to a combination of how much I like the sound and how novel I think it is compared to the other patches in the population so that hopefully over time it both gives me a diverse range of patches and they are patches that I actually like. Once I've scored the current patch, it automatically sets the next one in the population, and I score that one and so on until I've scored every patch in that generation. Then of course it does selection, crossover and mutation, and I score the next generation and so on. And ideally, each new generation will be closer and closer to a good set of diverse patches because the selection process removes the ones I scored lowly or represents them less in the new population and represents the ones I scored highly more. So I experimented with this, again trying out some different parameters for the algorithm and going through several generations. Although I have to say I never got past about 10 generations just because I mean, I can quite quickly score a patch, I can tell right away if I like it or not, but even so it is a time consuming task to score each patch in each generation, especially since I usually set it to somewhere around 50 to 100 patches in the population, so that's definitely a negative to this method. But yeah, here is some footage of me scoring some patches and listening to the results. <laughs> So what I actually found with this was that, just in the first couple of generations, there was usually some decent variations on the patches that I put in the starting generation. And past that it would sometimes just completely narrow in on one type of patch, so there wasn't much variation past like four generations, or the population would mostly just turn to mush that didn't sound terrible but didn't sound great either. And these are things that either could have been helped by different parameters like a different mutation rate, or probably just by actually training it for more than the 10 generations that I did. 
Going even further, a way to make this better in future could be to use a completely different algorithm, like a neural network of some kind and incorporating active learning, which is a way to minimise the number of candidates that you have to manually score. But yeah, that's too much effort for how much I care about this and have time for right now. But yeah, this was good enough to just get a few ideas that are mostly variations of stuff I already have, and playing now is a little bit of music that I made using one of the patches that came out of this program, so it was useful in the end. <laughs> 